Oh, whoa, brothers and sisters. Okay, let's continue with this teaching. Um, so we're saying that we, I and I, the Rastafari, we are the proof. Oh, whoa. Listen. Simu, 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 simu. Simu means to listen as in Shema. Oh, it's Raya. Awo, awo. Awo. This is the line of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty. We're going to continue with this teaching. And this teaching and this preaching. Because preaching is good, my brothers and sisters. It's just unfortunate that so much false preaching has gone on that they threatens to damage the very institution of preaching. Preaching means proclaiming. Proclaiming. This is our rightful role and responsibility as mature Rastafari. To preach, to teach, to build, and to till, my brothers and sisters. In fact... We're speaking on the proof of the resurrection of our Godfather of Abba Kedus, Kedus Abatachin of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, on this, the 81st anniversary of the coronation of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. And we've published this book. This book now, we can say it is published. We, this is actually the first copy of the book that we received from the printers and from the publishers. And it's now available at www.lojsociety.org. And it's called The Gospel of H.I.M., Haile Selassie, Book One. And there's much useful information that formerly has been suppressed, has been twisted, has been distorted, but the proof and the evidence for the foundation of the teachings of His Imperial Majesty. All thanks be to our gear, to our Master in Medicine, Jesus Christos, is contained in this book. And we're pleased and we are proud in Adunenu Yehoshua HaMoshiach to bring this particular book forward to you all, my brothers and sisters. But that being said, and it's just very interesting to I and I, that we receive from the publisher this particular book on this particular day, and we have it to bring forward to you at this particular time on the 81st in the year 2011 on this day, November 2nd, which is the 81st coronation anniversary, Metasebia, a memorial and remembrance of the coronation of Haile Selassie, the first, our Godfather and the King of Kings. This is a proof positive of the true gospel, of the true good news of Jesus Christos, our Master in Medicine. Now, with that being said, there's another important book, too, that hasn't been published by us, but it's a book that is, is a very good book, and we've talked about this before, The Roots, the Roots of Rastafari by Virginia Lee Jacobs. If one would ask us, is there a book that I can read, that I can get some of the basic foundation of Haile Selassie, Rastafari, the man, the movement, I would highly recommend this particular book. I would highly recommend this. So this is just the truth. You understand? We've read and seen a lot of different books about Ethiopia and being able to read the language and study the history, both from the Western as well as the Eastern perspective, and in a couple of other related Afro-Shemitic languages. This book is good, especially for the English speakers, you understand? And I believe Virginia Lee Jacobs perhaps is either a Gentile or a Jew or Perhaps she's a Rastafari herself because she's followed the movement since she was 15. And um, she writes a very good book and a very honest treatment of both the roots of Rastafari, the man, speaking of the Ethiopian roots, as well as the movement, I and I, Rastafari, as, and, as well as some of the other 
the rumors, accusations, criticisms of our Godfather. And that's where we want to go in another part of our teaching. We want to touch on the two views of Haile Selassie. There are two views of his imperial majesty. Some say he was an oppressor. Others say he was a redeemer. I and I have faith and, as they say, believe but admit that the real keys to understanding why there are these two views are actually contained in the proverbs or the parables of our master in medicine, Adonai Yeshua HaMoshiach, otherwise known as our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, contains the real keys for us. And I hope you stay tuned for that teaching, and I hope that Yah wills that we will be able to bring that particular teaching forward to you. But we want to just continue a little bit more on this particular subject matter, and the matter is that we as the Rastafari, we as the people, the essence of Rastafari, you understand, has been preserved, maintained, preached, proclaimed, and loved in this true Christian and Christ-man essence amongst us as the Rastafarians. And the fact that the Rastafari, as, as a movement, we don't have any, quote, so-called leaders in the worldly sense. We're like the ants. You remember the parable of our, um, of our ancestor, King Solomon? Let's look at this parable for a moment. And it also shows what sort of work we are to do because the next real stage of, of the ministry is organizing ourselves for that um, productive, progressive activity, you understand, as a community. But the good news, each of us individually, there are some things and certain basics that first principles, the Bible calls it, that we need to become acquainted with, we need to comprehend, and we need to understand and fulfill. You see what I'm saying? So it's both individual. When we say I and I, the I and I, of course, that's the we. That's the royal we. But each of I have to align I and I self and I and I ego, I and I personality with the testimony of Jesus Christos, with the testimony of our black Lord and Savior. This is a prerequisite, and this is the root of the teaching of His Imperial Majesty. And it has not always been properly or accurately proclaimed amongst many Rastafaris. For example, when some say that Bar Marley, some say Bob Marley became a Christian. They try to imply that because Bob Marley became a member of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, and this was at the time that he was passing from this life, as they would say, quote, dying. They said, well, his, uh, Bob Marley turned his back, you know, or they tried to imply that because he acknowledged Christ, he was no longer a Rastafari. That is not true, my brothers and sisters. But you see, what has happened amongst many of us as Rastafari is that the, the spirit and the inspiration that, that attracts us and draws us to his imperial majesty, often in dealing with this world of racism or white supremacy, we see the counterfeit uh, Christ and the, and the counterfeit gospel. We may not know what the gospel is, but we know that Christ, we have a feeling that the way that Christ has been proclaimed among the Gentiles, among the races, among white supremacy, we know that that blonde hair, blue eyed image, and, and the way those Christians have treated our people and other peoples and even themselves in the name of Christ, we know that that cannot be the Christ that we read about and that we learn about in this word. So the word, this is judge a tree by its fruit. So the tree of the white supremacy, Jesus, we recognize not just because it's white, 
not because some might see that because they're immature and they have not really learned. It, it, it's not because just it's blonde hair, blue eye, but it's because it contradicts both in name and in image and in deed, it contradicts the word that we learn in this D-I-B-L-E. So we're like the ants, my brothers and sisters. We have to recognize that we are like that people. In fact, the Bible talks about that there's a people. It's right here in, I think, um, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter 30. In Proverbs chapter 30, where it talks about different kind of, different kind of uh, animals and different kind of uh, creatures. And I think here it speaks about uh, Proverbs 30 and 25. It says that the ants are a people. The ants are a people. Not strong. We as Rastafari, we're not strong in the worldly sense of so-called other religions or other groups of people, so forth and so on, and even among our own lost sheep black folk. You understand? We're not a very strong number of people. You understand? But it's those few, it's those called, it's those chosen, those who receive, who Kabbalah, that truth. Yet, it says of the ants, it says they prepare their meat, their meal, you understand, their food in the summer. They prepare their food in the summer. That means that we have to get prepared. It talks about the conies, are but a feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rocks in the firm place, not the shifting sand, but the rock. And the rock for I and I is the teaching of his majesty. That's the rock for I and I as Ras to far eye. It says the locusts have no king. You see the locusts? The locusts don't have a king. But what does it say? Yet go they forth, all of them by bands. Yet they go forth in a collective way, in a collective way. So they are unified. It says the spider taketh hold with her hands and, in king, and is in king's palaces. Then it says there be three things which go well. There's three things which go well. Three. Four are comely, are beautiful in going. It says a lion as the lion of the tribe of Judah, which is the strongest among beasts, and turneth not away for any. A greyhound, and he goat also, and a king, and a king against whom there is no rising up. A king. See, his imperial majesty, he willingly stepped down. People want to tell you differently. You understand? But to the very last moment, he said, if the revolution is good for the people, I am for the revolution. At that moment that he was being politically and globally on the world stage being crucified, he willingly and voluntarily stepped down. You see, he said, if the revolution is good for the people, I am for the revolution. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, the Ethiopians, the careless Ethiopians have done so. Even we, many of our people as the lost sheep, the two families of the Lord have done so. Or if thou hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the wringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. So the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. So we, I know it's not to force wrath. You understand? That brings forth strife. There's already so much trouble in the world. Our message as Rastafari must be, and according to the word, about the good news. His Imperial Majesty says so. In his good news, in his gospel, his majesty says so. In fact, let's just share just a little bit of this. In fact, we just turn to page 151. His Majesty's Acts, Your Imperial Majesty. As a member of the body of Christ, what do you expect of the church? Brothers and sisters, 
Ainai is Rastafari. Ainai is the church. We are the new name. You understand? The new name. Christ says, according to Revelation, he will have a new name. It does not mean that the name of Christ or Yeshua is no more, but there will be a prophetic revelation. And that revelation has come. Many have missed it. This is why we still preach it and proclaim it. This good news, this gospel must be preached in all the world. And then the end will come. You see, the end of the Gentile world dominion, the end of this so-called world order, is only when the good news is preached throughout the earth. So that each human being living has an opportunity to decide for or against the good news, and then the end, and then the judgment. Haile Selassie, he answers the question of what he expects of the church. And I want I and I on this 81st coronation of His Imperial Majesty of Moa Anbesa Zeema Negeta Yehuda, of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, of to pay careful attention. His Imperial Majesty Hala Selassie the first, his answer, Hala Selassie the first, the last king of kings of Ethiopia. Check that out. He is Hala Selassie the first and the last, the Alpha, the Omega. He says the church is not merely a building. The church is the faithful fulfillment of the Christian life and its requirements. Christian life and its requirements. Thus, as the name applies to the buildings, so is our heart, I and I heart, the church in which God dwells, the church in which Hashem, Baruch Hu, Ha Elohim, the true God dwells. So our heart, one heart, one love, one heart, after our blameless creator was sent to this world by his father, then the hearts of all believers, of all the mitmenon, all those who have true amen, become the temple, the temple of God. The love of God cannot be fathomed by a series of questions and answers. And man's soul cannot experience deeper enrichment as a result. We believe, or inaminalin, naamin, 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 we believe, or we admit, we have amen. I and I, amen. I and I have amen. That men, that humanity, at all times be bound by his love and his grace. So let us remember this. On this day and on every day, my brothers and sisters. Questions and answers, that's good. But it says here clearly that the love of God cannot be fathomed by questions and answers. The love of God must be willingly experienced. So we must learn of him. We must learn of the word. We must study and show ourselves approved. Then the true unity the I and I T Y will come about in his will in his time and then I and I will see eye to eye. But first we must study and show ourselves approved, my brothers and sisters. So stay tuned. Shalom Rastafari.